All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So it's been quite a while since we've did any sort of update or modifications to our homemade ice maker. And as you can see, I've gotten a little fatter. These shirts don't fit as good anymore and the shop's a lot junkier. So I've kind of had to get away from fun projects like this and build because a lot of y'all are still hanging around on the channel and have seen that I have been building our house for the last 13 months. We're getting close to moving in. That'll free up some time, although I still have a ton of projects to do out there around the house, which I'm including on the channel. But it's springtime, it's about to be boating season. I need ice, I need ice bad. So we've had some things happen over the winter time with the ice maker. As of right now, it is not operational. I have had two ice maker failures. So if you're new to the channel or just stumbling across this video, you may want to go back and watch all the original builds and series of this. I took a deep freezer, put ice makers in it from refrigerators, and basically turned myself into a ice maker out here for the shop that stores a couple hundred pounds of it. It's been a highly watched series, literally a few million views on those videos. So I've actually had a couple of failures over the winter time. I had zero issues last year, all through the summer when I was using this, constantly scooping ice, no problems at all. One thing that happened, I had one of my ice makers overfill uh, last fall, last winter. I wasn't really using this much. It was filled all the way up. Um, and my last original ice maker that my friend has, he claims he had an overfill as well here recently. So I'm starting to wonder if during the wintertime when we're not using these as much, allowing them to get to super cold temperatures, if uh, basically we're just working the ice makers too hard or having the mechanism freeze up that actually tells, well, the valve when to kick off or on. So keep that in mind if you decide to build one of these things. Well, it could actually overfill. My second ice maker recently failed. It is all my fault. I have fans right here that were shoved in a bit too far. There is a metal bar mechanism that lifts up and on to tell the ice maker when to shut off should it actually fill up. And I didn't pay attention one day. I was scooping some ice out of here, closed it and apparently bumped the fans right into the bar. It was hung halfway up in there, kind of clicking it off and on and apparently just wore out the teeth on one of the plastic gears. So I have ordered two new ice makers. We're about to install them. I've spent the last couple of days defrosting this, cleaning it out, removing everything from it. So let's start over. This video series right here, I wanna run some tests. Whenever I built this one, this was a lot more involved than the original one. Kinda got disappointing results. It was about the same amount of production, maybe slightly less than the original. And a lot of people were saying, hey, I've put two high powered fans in here. You may just be moving too much air velocity. You need to play with that because if we've noticed in the last several sets of tests that we've done, air velocity is key. Adding air at movement in here really kicked up the ice production dramatically. But with that said, too much of a good thing may be a bad thing. So I've got new style fans. I've got variable speed controllers. So y'all have had a lot of requests about slowing down fan speeds and changing locations of the fan in here for moving air around. The ultimate goal is I just want my ice maker back working. I need the ice immediately for boating season here in Florida. But while we're getting it back to tip top shape, we might as well play with some of those suggestions y'all had, see if we can get any more production out of it. Although I think we're probably at maximum cooling capacity for the compressor in this style unit based on a lot of tests that we ran and a lot of y'all have given me the information about how much production you're getting out of yours. Kind of seems like we may be toward the upper end of what's possible, which I am very happy with that 10 to 11 pounds a day. That takes care of my needs for the week. All right, so all the hard work's done. All the mounting locations, this ring that we built. I'm just gonna put my brand new ice makers in here, get everything wired up and we're gonna start testing. All right, so here's kind of my thought process. I got a different style fan. This is actually a flat mount fan. So it pulls in air from this side and exhausts it out this port right here. This one also has a variable speed controller. So I can kick it on low. I can run it up to where it puts off a significant amount of air. 
but we're more curious about the uh, the low speed setting right here. Now I really only want to use one fan because the whole point of this test is to get air velocity down. I'm thinking somewhere over in this area mounted to the roof. Now you can see where I'm going with this. I really want roof mounted out of the way, do something nice and neat with the wires, have them run out the back. So now when I lift the lid up, there is no fans, nothing in the way because this is what I've been using. I've been using two very high powered fans. These are computer style fans from Cooler Guys. And I've just had them on a bar out here. And I've thought about mounting the bar up here to the lid so when you lift up, these come out of the way. And that still may be what I wind up doing. But I wanna get away from this because now every time I come out here to scoop ice, I have to put these up here out of the way and then I have to put them back. And that's how I damaged my last ice maker or one of these trip bars was right in the middle of its cycle and I pushed the fan up in it, didn't realize and it just sat there trying to drop, trying to go around and uh, locked it up basically. So we still may wind up running this style fan, but I don't really want them sticking out in the way as I'm scooping ice. I think this flat mount is gonna work great, assuming they actually hold up to freezing temperatures. These cooler guy fans, I haven't had a single failure, no problem after, heck, I've been running them in this now going on a year since I built the first one no failures. They can handle the zero degree temperature perfectly fine. So here's the issue I'm gonna have with trying to run a single fan. I could run two fans, you know, mounted to the lid and when it closed right in front, that's an option. But even on low, these kind of put off a quite a bit amount of air. And again, I just don't know that that's what I wanna do with two of these right here blasting on it. Plus if we can get away with only spending money on one, the whole point of this freezer build was to have the convenience of ice at home, but not break the bank either. Otherwise, I'd have done bought a $2,000 or $3,000 mana walk unit and had all the ice that I needed out here. But it's fun building these for a few hundred bucks and you get eh, 150, 200 pounds of ice stored and ready for you if you need it. So if I wind up mounting it over here, it's going to blow straight towards you. It's not going to blow over toward these ice makers. So I'm going to make a quick little diffuser that'll connect to the top and kind of shoot off this direction. Yes, I could mount the fan like this. Doesn't look the world's best. And have it to where it'll blow toward at least one of the ice makers, but there's really no good way to hit both of them with a single fan unless I make some sort of diffuser. So let's do that. So this here is called ABS sheet. And this stuff is way too thick for what I'm trying to do. I wish I had some eighth inch thick stuff. All I have is 3 16 but I always keep some of this around. It used to be relatively cheap. Everything is through the roof right now. You can cut it, score it with a razor knife, bend it, break it, heat it with a heat gun, change the shape. I used to use this stuff all the time back when I owned an automotive uh, accessory business. We would build stuff out of this constantly. So I'm thinking I'm gonna cut me a little tab, make me a diffuser to go right in front of this, and it'll be mounted with a single screw so I can actually change the angle of deflection over the air and kind of fine tune it, getting it toward the ice maker. May even wind up making two. That's the whole point of experiment and playing right here. Let's figure out what we want to do. All right, so now we're left with a little part like this that I'll attach here. We'll heat up with a heat gun, twist this all the way around, and then we have a little fan that we can point one direction or the other. So now I'll take my heat gun, heat this up, and twist this piece. Now you can see how nice this stuff bends and twists with heat. As soon as it cools off, it's locked into place. All right, so now we have an adjustable damper, deflection plate, whatever you want to call it. And I can deflect 
and split the air as well. You can always build a second one of these. I could make one that'll have two dampers on it. I, I can play around with this all that I want. Now I specifically made for sure this would not go up any higher than the fan because if I mount this to the actual lid, I need this to still be able to swing freely for adjustment. All right, let's plug this in. Let's see if it works as intended. Yes, yes it does. It is moving air in two different directions. So most people in the comments seem to agree that any sort of air movement, whether it's directly at the ice makers or just stirring and mixing air up, bringing cool air from the bottom, washing out that hot air that you just introduced by opening it, they're saying that's what's really gonna make the difference. So we're gonna find out with this very simple test. Now I don't have anything in the lid, no wiring, no heat strips, nothing like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this to the lid. I'm out of a warranty period anyways, and y'all might as well let me be the guinea pig. All right, get this damper adjusted where it needs to be. Okay, we're getting a nice even distribution of air across both the ice makers. I'm just gonna leave the wiring and everything loose for now since this is all kind of a proof of concept here and we'll do something to attach the wiring later, make everything look much better. <laughs> this little fan kicks out some air. So we can go all the way from the low end to the high end with a single fan, I really like that. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to wire up both of these brand new ice makers. I'm gonna plug this in. I'm gonna let this chill for 24 hours. We're gonna monitor the temperature. We're gonna collect the ice tomorrow that it made, toss out, then we're gonna start our testing. We'll play with locations of the fan, the damper. We may move up to two fans. We move up, may move back to these other style fans. We already have data with those, so we might as well play with this. But most importantly, we'll start out on a low setting, a medium setting, and maybe ramp it all the way up to a high setting and see if we see an increase in ice production with an increase in velocity of the air movement as well. Let's find out. See y'all back tomorrow. All right, so it is next morning, and I'm coming out here to check on the ice maker itself. We'll go ahead and clean it out, see what ice that it's made, and then we'll start our official 24-hour testing. Now, I like to run two 24-hour tests anytime I make a change and then average the numbers together because you just don't know at what point that you come out here in the shop and the ice maker's just dumped, just refilled or maybe getting close to dumping. So if I take two 24 hour tests to average them together, that's kind of much more of an accurate representation of what we're gonna make. Now, realistically, going five or seven days would probably be even better, but for the nature of this fun test, two tests is perfectly fine. I'm not gonna lie, that's actually more ice than I was expecting because keep in mind, this was at absolute room temperature yesterday when I started this test, like high 70s, almost 80 degrees. I had to cool all the way down and then start the below 10 degrees cycle, which is what activates uh, the ice makers to start bringing in water and producing. So that's quite a bit of ice for several hours of lost production. Hmm. All right, I've got all the ice out of there. We are still at minus three degrees. So I think it's safe to say we can go ahead and start the testing. Anything below 10 degrees, the ice makers activate and keep running. Like we've done in the past, I will also keep track of the watt hour usage. And this has a built-in timer. So we know to come out here in exactly 24 hours. All right, so I decided to try something a little new on this test. It has now been 47 hours and 59 minutes. I decided since I typically do two 24 hour test averages of results, let's just go full a full 48 hours. Now, if it winds up being there's just too much ice, too much to handle, I may have to go back to splitting the test up. This will introduce a little less air, 
should be less frost built up on the walls throughout this entire testing process and make the freezer a little more consistent. This is more realistic to how I'm gonna use it every few days. I don't come out here every single day and scoop out of it. So I'm waiting for this to hit 48 hours exactly. This is the fan test on the lowest speed setting that I can get it to keep the fan spinning in this cold environment. And we've been averaging between minus five to up to two degrees. I've seen it kind of go through some cycles and swing there throughout the last two days. All right, <clears throat> so we just hit 48 hours. I'm gonna look at our kilowatt hour usage because I've been tracking that as well, just like in our last test. And uh, ultimately, we're gonna see how much ice we made. That's what we truly care about. So I'll show you this real quick without letting too much air get in there. Obviously both the bins have overfilled and it's all in the bottom, so I gotta scoop it all out. So what I'm gonna do, since we have so much ice, I'm gonna take my scale here, put me a little piece of wood on there. We're gonna have to put everything in something larger like this bucket. I'm gonna go ahead and put that piece of wood and bucket on here. Zero it out, set this to the side, fill this bucket up with ice and then put it right back on here so we can get just an ice weight. All right, so as you can see, that's still at a minus two pounds there taking the weight out. It's moving around as I'm moving it. There it is, that's accurate. Put all this back on here and let's see what the ice itself weighs. I'm not so sure what to expect here. I think I was thinking there would be a little more, but let's see. Well, I guess that's, uh, that's about standard. 20 pounds, 11 ounces. So we made almost a little less than 10 and a half pounds a day. Not bad. So 20 pounds, 11 ounces for a 48 hour test. That's a little lower than what we've been running in the past, but right in the ballpark. We've been kind of averaging around 11 pounds. Um, actually, looking back at the last test results, there was a lot of 10, 10 and a half pound days. So we're right there on average where we've been. So to keep this test fair, I'm gonna go dump this ice in the cooler. We're not gonna increase or decrease the thermal mass in this cooler. We wanna keep things nice and consistent. And I am going to bump the speed controller up to medium for this fan. So we're gonna dramatically increase the, uh, the fan velocity. We're not gonna change any other variables, the position of the fan, nothing. And we're gonna see if a simple increase in speed gets us a little more production right there. Just so y'all know, we're still showing minus one degrees in there, opening it to pull the ice out, made practically no change in the temperature. That's still plenty low enough to activate and trigger the ice makers. So let me reset this kilowatt meter, everything else. And uh, I guess I'll see y'all back in 48 hours again for the medium fan speed test. All right, so it has now been 48 hours for the medium speed fan test. And I don't know if y'all can hear this, but it's kicking out a lot more air velocity. Going from low to medium on the speed controller really has this thing ramped up. So I'm curious if an increase in velocity or air speed is really gonna increase ice production that much. Now we know from tons of testing in the past, going from no fan to a fan literally gives over 100% increase in production. So air movement, makes a huge difference. But does going from slow, medium to high speed make a lot of a difference? Well, that's what we're testing. As usual, drop some ice, but I captured it all. <laughs> 21.15.8 ounces. We're not gonna get that technical. We are 0.2, you know, two tenths of an ounce away from 22 pounds. I know typically I don't round up, but two tenths of an ounce, we're talking just a minuscule amount here. I guarantee I still have enough slivers of ice in there where some cubes busted. I could sprinkle in here and get to 22 even. That's gonna be so much easier for us for calculating this out. All right, now you should be able to hear this fan is ramped up. I'm gonna go ahead and do a high speed test. So low, medium to high. As you can see right there with the very easy math that we just got to, 11 pounds a day. So 
a half a pound a day increase there, one pound for every two days. While that's not a huge amount, that is a result and that is an increase. I should also mention, I can't control the variables. I can't control mother nature. It was a considerable amount warmer yesterday than it was during the first test. Does it have much of an impact on the freezer? The temperature was higher, no doubt about that, but we stayed below that 10 degrees needed to constantly activate and cycle the ice makers themselves. And we got an increase in production. All right, well, it has now been a full 48 hours with the fan, single fan on high speed. And you should probably be able to hear it. It's quite a noisy and loud fan, moves a considerable amount of air to be so compact and in one area. So we've seen a pretty decent jump, moderate, but decent jump with the medium fan speed. Let's see if we see any increase all the way on high. Normal, the scale has already been zeroed out. Twenty pounds, thirteen point three ounces. So we'll just say twenty pounds, thirteen ounces. So interesting. The very high speed is now almost tied with what the low speed was. It was the medium speed that produced the most. Could it have been atmospheric conditions or other things that cause these results? Possibly. Or some of your theories is the higher the speed actually is hurting this. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna run one more 48 hour test to test that theory. I'm gonna take the two extremely high speed fans that I have that blow directly over the ice makers. We're gonna run them for 48 hours. We need to see what those produce. So it's a little single fan over here on medium, able to produce more or just as much as two very high speed fans blowing directly over. That I kind of prove this theory of you eventually reach a certain point where air, air velocity no longer is making a difference. I have a feeling that there's a certain point what we're really doing is stirring up and mixing the air in there. And once you kind of hit that peak and point I don't know if it matters. Then you maybe start getting into, we're causing too much evaporation. So the water being evaporated off the top is turning into condensation on the side and you're actually losing ice production. There's all kinds of theories that could go on here. We don't really truly know what's going on in the background. At the end of the day, I just want to find the sweet spot and make some ice. All right, so it's been 48 hours and one minute. We pretty much nailed it. Let's see what's going on with the two cooler guy fan uh, test that we're running here. This is the most CFM that I am able to put in here, most air velocity. Let's see, did it help, did it hurt? Because according to the test that we were just running with the variable speed fan, more velocity actually hurt us. There's kind of a sweet spot in the middle. Was that just something random or is there truth to that? Let's see. This is gonna be interesting here. This is quite a bit more ice than we've had the last few days. Oh my goodness. A heck of a lot more ice. What? Holy cow. Y'all, this may be my new record. 26 pounds. 14.7 ounces. Well, I don't think we're gonna worry about that 0.7, but almost 27 pounds. Let's just do 26, 14. Y'all, that is a heck, and I mean a heck of a jump. <sighs> now I've got to wonder if this is a one-time thing or not. I feel like I need to run this test for another two days. Mm-mm-mm. All right, so it's been another 48 hours with the two cooler guy fans pointed directly at the ice makers. We had such amazing results the other day. I decided to run another two day test to see if that was just an anomaly basically, um, or if that's something that we can expect 
Now I know in the past running these same fans with, well, very similar ice makers, even though these are brand new, we typically get a little less, but that's when the freezer is more filled up. I'm noticing our temperatures run a little differently when the freezer has a lot of thermal mass and ice in it. And I truly think what's happening is the more ice that you fill up in there, you're not allowing the air to stir up that super cold, dense air that's settled down in the bottom, uh, which makes good sense. All right, so we're gonna cut this off, pull the ice out and weigh it. Can we get 26 pounds of ice again? I think no, but let's see. All right, my suspicions appear to be correct. While this is an amazing amount of ice, it is not as mounded up as it was two days ago. However, still very impressive. 24 pounds, we're just gonna call that five ounces. Very respectable and an excellent number. So as we've seen in the past, we do get some swings and inconsistencies in numbers, no matter how long we run these tests. And most likely what it has to do is, well, mother nature, the weather variables, things that are just out of our control. Certain days it'll be overcast and rainy. Certain days, well, it's 86 degrees down here in Florida. Hot, temperature radiating off the building, plus incoming water temperature is affected. And we've run chilled water tests before and seen, I think it was somewhere between a seven and 9% increase alone just on incoming water temperature. Then if you factor that in, well, we're in a hot shop, we're putting this under load. Um, yeah, I can see how there can be some swings like we're seeing. But with that said, well, the cooler guy fans are giving us the most ice, so the higher air velocity and directing it directly at it is giving us the highest poundage per day out of all these tests that we've run thus far. So it answers the question that yeah, higher air velocity does make a difference. Now I'm gonna run one more 48 hour test right here. Uh, I probably should have started with this, but I'm genuinely curious because it's been quite some time since we've run the test with no fans. So this will give you an idea of how much you can expect to produce with no fans at all. And from what I remember in the past, it was a huge, and I mean significant difference. So let's take a look at that versus the fans that we've tested thus far. All right, so it has now been 48 hours with zero fans, nothing. And I probably should have started the test like this to have a good baseline, but at least we're getting those numbers now. And for people that's wondering what the heck all this fan testing is about, I wanna show you, even though I haven't looked in here yet, the difference that fans makes. No other modifications have been made, same ice maker, same incoming water, everything. All we've done is taken fans out of the equation here and I bet you we're gonna see a huge difference in ice production. <laughs> a comical difference. Now, one thing I have always noticed, with no fans, you get almost crystal clear ice. Usually the center will have some coloration to it. With fans, it's always milky, I guess because of the constant uh, wind speed and all going over there, it agitates water, which what most people say agitated water freezes clear. That doesn't seem to be the case. All right, y'all ready for this? I kid y'all not. This is actually a lot less than I was thinking. It's been so long since I did a no fan test. Wow. Check that out almost six pounds even, three pounds a day with no fans. Three pounds a day versus I think our worst test this run was 10 pounds a day and we had two days where we got 13 pounds a day. Adding a fan makes a world of difference, a significant difference, any kind of fan, just move that air around in there. Now the one thing I will notice and say with no fans, yesterday, even though it's a little higher now, it was staying at like minus 14 degrees. The temperature is much colder in the bottom. 
that's the key. That's what's critical about any sort of fan movement in there. You're getting stratification in there. So you're getting warm air up top, heat rises, you're getting cold air down low, and that fan, any sort of fan movement in there is bringing that super cold air up to the ice makers where it needs to be. If we could put these ice makers down in the very bottom, our ice production would probably go through the roof to the point that we'd probably destroy these plastic geared things. They'd be kicking out so much ice. But, well, there's a problem with mounting them so low, they would bury themselves in the ice and cut right off. So the fan helps mix up that stratified air Mixing the heat and the cold, that's why I always see temperatures 10, 12, 15 degrees higher when I run fans versus when I do not. All right, so now what does this mean moving forward? I have to choose a design on fans. I want something that's a little cleaner than what I have, and we need to go ahead and get those mounted out of the way and working properly. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm on the fence about do I go with the very powerful cooler grab fans that are giving me excellent ice production or do I go with a small single fan that's out of the way it's variable speed I can kind of control production within a pound or two a day um I just don't know you know the the logical thing says hey make the most ice you can and get that but any of these fans are actually out producing what I take from this a week unless I have a week where I go saltwater fishing then I can take 80 to 100 pounds at a time it's just not as often here lately as I would like typically I'm pulling out maybe 20 30 plus pounds of ice a week and no matter what fan I put in here I'm always going to be at a surplus All right, so after much debating and sleeping on it, as y'all can see, I decided to go with this single low profile variable speed fan. And you're probably wondering why would I choose to do this over those cooler guy fans that got quite a bit more ice production. All right, and the story is honestly, these are big and bulky. Yes, they move the air, no doubt about that. They have been 100% reliable for the last many months that I've ran them. No issues being in the uh, cold temperatures in here, nothing. The thing of it is, this right here is producing more ice than I can take out in a week. So I don't personally see the need to have large fans up here in my way where I'm trying to scoop and I can, you know, get the production I need with a small single fan out of the way. By the way, I just went ahead and hooked that up too to the door switch right here. So whenever you open it, it's not pulling in hot room air and trying to force it back down in here, just like the original design. Also like the variable speed control back here, turn it up, down, or off with a flip of a switch based on my ice production needs. Now, yes, I could hook the cooler guy fans up to a speed controller, no doubt about that, but this already comes simple, ready to go, and uh, I just like the low profile design of everything. So speaking of flipping that off on medium, high, whatever I want, off right now, just as it is. Say it's the middle of the winter, and I just don't need a whole lot of ice production, or this is starting to get mostly filled up. You remember the test results? We were averaging exactly three pounds a day with no fans at all in here. That is extremely low, extremely low. Actually far lower than a single ice maker on the original build. But I still think us adding this collar, this extra dead airspace in there that has no coils in it is really hindering the freezer. I think there's more production to get out of a freezer without the collar but don't forget the whole point of building this collar was zero modifications, cutting into a freezer, nothing. You're just lifting the lid up. That's a nice safe build to do right here. So I can go from three pounds a day in the off position. I can flip that switch on low and we were averaging uh, a little over 10 pounds a day. That's a heck of an increase y'all, a heck of an increase to go from three to 10 plus pounds with that fan on low. When I threw it in the medium position, sped it up a little, a little more airspeed in there, we averaged 11 pounds a day. Now we're talking, that's 77 pounds a week right there. 
I personally take out 20 to 30 on any given week, so that's outpacing me by a huge margin. Now, there is the rare week that I go saltwater fishing and I'll need 80 pounds of ice, so that's the beauty of having this freezer. It can always have a surplus or storage in there. Now, when we went to high fan speed, hey, we got some odd results. It actually dropped down about a half a pound a day. Don't know what went on there, but we see odd test results like that from time to time. So 10 and a half to 11 pounds a day, a day seems to be easily achievable with this low profile out of the way fan based on where I have the setting. Actually, we can say anywhere from three to 10 and a half to 11 pounds a day. Flip of the switch, you're off. So I love being able to vary production right, like that. And again, the low profile design, it's hard to beat. That's the reason why I chose to go with this. Now, the Cooler Guy fans, yeah, first test got us almost 27 pounds in two days. Think about that, almost 13 and a half pounds a day, which is a record for me. I hit 13 once before in some previous testing, but I could never duplicate it again. This did it two days in a row. So I decided to run another two day test just to see if something odd was going on. And it did drop, but we're still 24 pounds, five ounces. So over 12 pounds a day. So somewhere between the 12 to 13 plus pound a day range. That's a lot of ice production in a week you can get with those cooler guy fans over there. So yes, airspeed, it absolutely does determine how much ice production you get, your air velocity. That was the whole reason we run this test here. I don't wanna beat a dead horse doing this testing over and over and over, but it was enough of a comment and request in the comment section, I decided I would try it. So long story short, I think I have found what I need. I think I'm gonna get longer longevity out of my ice makers with a low speed fan over here in the corner instead of freezing them hard and blowing uh, that cold air out over them. I have noticed also with the cooler guy fans blowing directly over the ice makers, occasionally I'll see some ice build up on the back wall and I'm almost wondering if either excessive evaporation is happening or if I'm blowing water out of the ice trays themselves. And I have seen some ice maker failures as well due to overfilling and freezing those ice fingers in there. So my mind and my gut tells me this lower speed fan over here with slightly less production is not gonna blow any water out. It's not gonna make any ice clumps beneath the ice makers and it very well may keep them from freezing up, but we're still getting excellent production. So that's why I've decided to no longer push the limit and just try to run these to the absolute max. I think if we back off, I'm still getting all the production needs that I need a nice clean install on the inside, and I think I'll increase longevity. Now, the other beautiful thing about this is, hey, we went wild on version 2.0 here when we first built it. Drop tubes, pulling cold air off the bottom. No doubt we could probably push this thing more toward 14 pounds a day, but this just made the build of this very reasonably priced. All I have is one fan with a speed control on the back, none of that other stuff that I originally had, and built the collar. It doesn't get much more simple than that. No need and all the other electronic components that we had with the original version 2.0 build. Now I'm not, I will not confirm or deny that I'll ever build a version 3.0. We'll just call, call it that. So I may down the road on the channel if uh, the bug bites me, but I have so many other projects I wanna do. If you're watching the channel, you know the house is priority right now and I have some very fun projects and builds coming up on the house. Um, other things around the property, I have some solar projects I wanna build out here at the shop. So like I said, we're just not gonna probably continue to beat a dead horse with the ice machine here. But if y'all do have an awesome suggestion or something worth trying, oh, I'll absolutely revisit it. No problem at all. So thank y'all so much for watching. This has been an awesome ride. Now it's time to let this thing work. It's springtime here in Florida. It's boating season. I need this to start pumping out the ice. So I'm about to kick the fan on and we're gonna let it fill up. Thanks for watching. <laughs>